Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, I'm going to make a test tile. I'm not only going to make the test tile, I'm going to make a new plaster mold so I can slip cast a test tile. And not only am I going to make the plaster mold, I'm actually going to 3D print a mold to make that plaster mold. You might hear my kiln clicking on and off in the background. It's doing a slow cool from a glaze firing. So I haven't used test tiles too much. Actually, I haven't used them at all. I've just been using some small pots to test things out, but I want to get more into experimenting with some glazes, and I think having some test tiles would be handy for that. It let me explore the parameter space a lot easier and not need nearly so many pots. The other thing I want to get better at is my plaster mold making. My last few videos on plaster molds worked okay, but none of them really came out perfectly. A while ago, I made a video on different ways to make plaster molds using 3D printing, that was all conceptual at that point. In this video, I actually want to try it out. So here is my test tile. Well, not really. This is obviously 3D printed. So I designed this on the computer, and it is about an inch wide on the bottom and a couple inches tall. I've rounded off all the corners. So I want to be able to slip cast this part so it matches the rest of my process. So in previous videos, if I just made a mold around the part I want to slip cast and pour the plaster in. So I assume this is a pot. I made a box around the outside. I'd put it in, I'd pour the plaster in around it. The trick was removing the part from the plaster and it was okay, but it wasn't great. So let's jump over the computer and I can show this part in 3D and what I wanna do with my plaster molds. So here we are in Fusion. This is the part I just showed you that I had printed out. I did a few tweaks to it, but overall it worked pretty well. So to slip cast this, we need a plaster mold around the outside. So I went ahead and modeled that. So here, let me zoom out a little bit, is the plaster mold. So I can turn on and off the test tile. And you can see that I have plaster around the outside edge here. So I basically went an inch around the entire test tile. So I went off to the sides, I went off to the top, and then I also went off to the bottom. So you can see also there's a hole in the bottom. And this is only one half, so I made a two-part plaster mold. So here's the test tile. I can turn on the section analysis from the side. You can see here on the back is the plaster, and this is the test tile. There would be another part mirrored this that would capture the other face of the test tile. So now we don't need the test tile anymore. What I want is to 3D print. I'll turn off the section analysis. So what I want is to basically 3D print a mold for my plaster mold. So I need to create pieces around that. So I made a bunch of different shells. I can turn the section analysis back on that encapsulate the plaster. I think this may make more sense in the physical world, but the idea is that we have a 3D printed plastic mold to house the plaster mold that we will cast. So the surface that we really care about is this bottom one here. That's where the test tile is. Everything else is really just to hold the plaster. One of the other things you'll note is that I basically have a big hole. So the plaster is going to come in from this way. I created these tabs around the outside just to be able to hold the different pieces of the plastic together to surround the plaster mold. All right, so let's print all this out and show it to you in the real world. It might make a little bit more sense there. All right, so here's the test tile. And here are the pieces for the mold for the plaster off my 3D printer. So you'll see that there are three pieces here. The one that is the most important is this one right here. This will be the bottom of the mold. And you'll notice that the shape of this is exactly the shape of that. When the plaster goes in here, the face facing the plastic here will be the one where the clay touches or the slip in particular. And so we want that to be the same as what creates the face of the test tile. If this were a pot, it would be exactly the same. The back side of this is rough. It doesn't really matter because there's nothing gonna be on that side. So this is the most critical face. All the rest of this is really just support for the plaster. So I made this in multiple parts, so hopefully it can come off around the plaster easier. So I made this end here that goes like that. And I made this, piece with the walls around the side. So the idea is I can pour plaster in here. I'll probably need to tape this together so it doesn't fall apart. This will form the sprue for the plaster to go in, and then there'll be a cavity that is the shape for the test tile. So what I need to do next is secure the mold together and mix up a little bit of plaster, and this will give me half of the mold. So while I was at it, I went ahead and printed up a second one. 
This will let me do two halves of plaster, which will come together to make the one mold to mold this one piece. Okay, I think I've got everything set up for plaster now. I've got some water here, an empty tub for the water so I can measure it, an empty tub so I can put plaster into it. So I have my mold for the plaster and I've just used some packing tape to tape these together. These will probably leak some, but that's okay as long as all the plaster doesn't leak out. I've got my scale and one of the tricks I saw is to take a garbage bag and put it inside of the bucket you're going to use to mix up the plaster so you don't need to clean out the bucket. That seemed like a really good idea, so I'm going to do that. And the other thing I have is Murphy soap. I've seen this recommended in several different places, including in a couple of the comments on my videos to use as a mold release. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that before I forget. So I just dab some on a paper towel here. I'm going to rub it around the inside. All right, so that's all nice and slick now. Hopefully that will work as a great mold release. All right, so Fusion 360 told me that the volume of this is just shy of 0.3 liters. So I have two of them, so I need about 0.6 liters. There's also been some debate on my channel and with myself about how much water I need in my plaster and basically the ratio between dry plaster and water. I've been looking at the data sheet and there's a curve there around density of the plaster given amount of water. I'd assume I wanted it dense uh, to make it more strong. I'm thinking actually I may be wrong, so I'm gonna move it towards the other end. I'm gonna do about a one-to-one -one mixture of plaster to water and see how that works. It's one of the nice things about doing these small test tile molds as well is that I can play around with this and I don't have to worry about a huge mold. The other thing that was related to that is how much I mix the plaster. Again, the more you mix it, the stronger it's going to be. That may be the wrong thing for slip casting molds. I haven't seen anything definitive, so if anyone has any pointers to documentation around the, the differences between amounts of water and mixing times on the results on the slip casting process, I would love to see some, basically some experimental results. Barring that, I'm going to do a little bit of that myself. So I need around 600 milliliters of mixed up plaster. So I think I might shoot for 700 just so I have some extra. That is 696, close enough. So I'm gonna take this and dump it in my garbage bag lined bucket. And now I want approximately the same amount by mass of plaster. So I've got my respirator, I'll go ahead and put that on and we'll do the plaster. All right, I think that is close enough. All right, so see if I can get you a better angle. So my water's in here. I'm just going to slowly pour in the plaster. All right, that is all of the dust. So I take off my mask and I'll just mix this up some. So the other thing I'm making sure to do is use cold water. That definitely slows down the reaction process. That part I know. So this is much soupier than I've used in the past, which I think is a good thing. I think that may be part of my bubble problem. I'm just gonna let that slake for a couple minutes. All right, this is definitely on the runny side compared to what I'm used to, but let's try it out. That's the other reason I'm using some very small molds. And things will likely spill, which is I have this board that already has plenty of plaster on it. Okay, these have sat for a while. I cleaned up a little bit of the mess. Definitely had some more leakage, so we will need to address that in the future. All right, let's see if we can remove the tape and then the mold. Having this uh, bucket I mix everything with a trash bag is awesome. It's just a little trash can now I can use.
All right, now for the real test. Let's see if the mold parts will come apart without being destroyed. Oh, that came off. Perfect. Top came off. Or the size, actually. Oh, this is going to release as well. Wow, awesome. That came out just great. Still a little bit wet, but that's fine. All right, let's do this one. And no problem. Got the sides off. And this is going to come just fine too. Yep, no problem. All right, I got that all cleaned up. Having the trash bag in the mixing bucket was awesome. I didn't have to clean this out. That was great. These cleaned up really well as well. Ooh, the Murphy's soap. Yeah, it made it release just fine. There's a little bit of plaster here and there, but it's all on the outside, so I don't really care. I can chip it off later. And then here are the two plaster parts. These also turned out really well. I think they have really nice resolution. So the idea is here is my original. That should fit right in here. And then these two would go together. I don't want to force it because it's still pretty wet. And the tolerances may not be perfect. So the idea is I can take these and put them together just like this and pour my slip down the middle. Now one thing I just realized is I don't have any registration marks inside of my mold so they don't actually align perfectly. For a test tile that won't matter but if I do a real pot I definitely want to make sure I do that. And of course the other thing that I messed up on was I didn't tape these together very well and so I had plaster poured everywhere. These aren't as thick as I had intended. Again for test tiles I don't think it really matters. For other parts it'd be much more critical. I think what I do is when I parted these to make all the different parts of the mold I just put a plane through it and so there is a flat face here and a flat face here and then I added these little tabs so things could align and they wouldn't slide back and forth. I think if I put a feature in this face, for instance, like a V, and then the opposite of the V in this face, one, they would meet together and they wouldn't slide around, but then also they would interlock a little bit. And that might prevent some of the plaster from coming out the seams. We'll see, definitely room for improvement there, but overall, I'm very happy with this process. So these are still really wet and they need to finish curing. My kiln's finished firing if you had heard it before and it's still reasonably warm. So I'm going to put these near the kiln and let them dry out the rest of the way. We will then give it a try. Okay, so the plaster is all dry now. I have some giant rubber bands. I'll use that to bind it together. Now I'll just try and get the alignment as best I can without actually having reference marks inside. So I just mixed up some of my slip and we will pour it in. Tiny mold so it doesn't take much. Alright, this has been sitting for a while. I actually forgot about it. I don't think there's any leftover slip. No, nothing came out. There we go, we got a little bit of flash. And the plug. So that came out of the mold awesome. So all I need to do is trim that up. So one test tile, I can just go ahead and let that dry now. So I think this worked out awesome. Uh, this is probably my best mold so far. It being small helped. 
I say the only thing I am really missing are a couple of divots so that the mold will seat together. And obviously when I poured it, I didn't get the full height of the plaster. So I need to work on the 3D printed mold for the plaster a little bit more. But in terms of a mold for the slip, I think this was awesome. Since this is in pieces, I can actually go ahead and replace one side if I wanted. So for instance, if I wanted a texture, I could actually put a texture on one side of the test tile by creating a new 3D printed piece, a new plaster mold, and then those would sandwich together and I could have one side smooth and one side textured. I might actually go ahead and make a few more of these and then anytime I am slip casting, I can just put these off to the side and create a few test tiles. And that way I can just create a large collection of them so I'll have a bunch whenever I want to use them. Hope you found that interesting. I'm definitely gonna try this 3D printing process more. I think this is probably my most promising attempt so far at creating plaster molds. So I was very pleased with that. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks.